Hello friends, welcome again. And today in this session we will discuss assessment of physical distance of pavements. Now this test can be done in the laboratory as well as in the field. The physical distance is defined as the force developed when the tire is no longer able to rotate on the pavement surface and as a result loses traction and slides along the top of the surface. It is important parameter for evaluating the safety of a pavement when longitudinal movement is more than rotatory movement of the wheels. So that is how it occurs. A wheel on the surface of the road, the weight acts vertically downward and this is the direction of the movement. So rotatory motion is in the direction and in the clockwise direction and the friction develops at the interface of wheel and the road surface. When the brakes are applied, the moment applied to the wheel is in the opposite of the rotatory motion and that also creates frictional force. Skid resistance depends on several factors and the first is the vehicle speed. It is seen that the skid rumber or the frictional force reduces with the speed. As the speed increases, the friction force reduces. The second is the microstructure of aggregate and macrostructure of the surface. The microstructure of an aggregate is visible only when they are seen through a microscope and these are the grain boundaries of an aggregate particles. Whereas macrostructure is provided by the surface layer and it controls the wet grip. And therefore, the scale distance depends upon both microstructure of individual particle, individual aggregate and macrostructure of the surface. The third is surface condition, whether it is wet or dry. Scale distance on a wet pavement varies with the thickness of the water film on the pavement surface and for a given speed thicker the water film lower is the skid resistance. The next is tire characteristics. Tire tread pattern is one of the most critical factors affecting skid resistance. More is the tread depth more will be the drainage capacity and hence more will be the skid number or skid resistance. Skid resistance for a new tire will be higher than that of a worn out tire. And finally, the road geometry. The effect of the inclination of the surface of the road, that is particularly at circular curves or intersections where pressure on one side of the vehicle is more. So when a vehicle turns on a horizontal curve, there is a difference in pressure on two tires and that causes inclination of the tire also and maximum shear stress increases with an increase in the tire inclination angle from 0 to 10 degree. This suggests that a section of pavement with a higher volume of turning traffic, for example at intersections may be more susceptible to shear and surface rating failure. Inadequate skid resistance or the coefficient of friction on a road can lead to an accident as vehicle will need longer length of the highway to stop and therefore it is important to estimate skid distance of a particular surface. And there are several methods of measuring skid distance. The four are very popular or very common. One, polished stone value, which can be done either in the laboratory on aggregate which are to be used in the road surface or it can also be done in the, in the field to determine the skid distance of the surface layer. Then you have locked wheel skid tester that is your micro texture test or a spin up tester which is similar to locked wheel skid tester and the fourth one is macro texture test and that is determined by sand patch method. The first test is polished stone value test which is conducted as per BS812 British standard 812. This test is a two-stage test. The first stage samples are polished in an accelerated polishing machine like this and then they are tested with British skid pendulum to determine their polished stone value or PSV. 
Now this is the mold which is flat across the width and curved along the length and 14 molds are prepared and these molds will fit into the rim of this wheel and that is called roll wheel. It is fitted in the machine here and above that rest a pneumatic wheel and the, the road wheel will rotate and a continuous supply is made for the mixture of sand and water at the interface of these two wheels so that it causes abrasion of the aggregate. The aggregate used for making the specimen is of size passing 10 mm and retained on 8 mm so this is a single size aggregate and you need a paste of cement and sand. Sand should have gradation like this. Place a thin layer of the paste in the mold and then each particle here now each particle of the aggregate is placed in the mold by hand over this paste in a single layer. The particle should be flat at the bottom. It should not be flaky. It should not be elongated and you get the mold of this size. The space between the particles is filled with the sand and it is not necessary to use this paste of cement and sand always. You can also use some adhesive like araldite in the mold to place the aggregate. Then 14 such specimens are prepared. They are cured and these specimens are clamped around the rim of the road wheel of the machine. So this is the wheel of the machine. You place each of these four, 14, each of the 14 samples around this rim and then fit in the machine and lower down the rubber tire wheel until it rests on the surface of the road wheel touching the specimen. Then we apply a load through a lever about 40 kg and then this machine is rotated at a speed of 300 to 320 rpm and a continuous supply of sand and water is made at the interface of two wheels then release the averaging sand and water the specified rate uniformly and run this machine for three hours after that we stop the machine clean the surface of a specimen with water to remove all particles of sand and then the same procedure is repeated with emery powder and water. So we do polishing in two stages, one with sand and water and then with emery powder and water, each for three hours. After that you remove the specimen from the road wheel, clean them and then determine the PSV under British Pendulum Tester. Now this is the British Pendulum Tester. It has a vertical column fixed to the base and a pendulum which is hinged at one end to the vertical column. And this pendulum hat has a spring loaded rubber slider which is attached to the other end. Now the specimen is placed here. The pendulum is released from a horizontal position so that it strikes the sample surface with a constant velocity. The distance traveled by the head after striking the specimen is governed by the friction offered by the sample and it is read on this scale here. You can directly read the PSV value of aggregate on this scale. That is the height by which this pendulum will go after striking the surface of the specimen. So that is how you determine the polystone value of aggregate. The second method is locked wheel tester and this method uses a locked wheel skidding along the tested surface to measure friction resistance. The vehicle or trailer is brought to the desired resting speed which is typically 40 miles per hour or 64 km per hour and then water is sprayed ahead of the test tire to create a wetted pavement surface. The test tire braking system is then actuated to lock the test tire. Instrumentation measures the friction force acting between the test tire and the pavement and reports the results as speed number SN. Now this procedure is given in ASTO T242 or ASTM E274.
the third test is spin up tester a spin up tester has the same basic setup as a locked wheel tester but operates in an opposite manner for a spin up tester the vehicle or trailer is brought to the desired testing speed which is again typically 64 km per hour and a locked test wheel is lowered to the pavement surface the test wheel is allowed to spin up to normal traveling speed due to its contact with the pavement so mathematically the friction force at the tire pavement interface at any moment corresponds to that which would be present if the locked tire were pulled along the pavement at testing speed now this spin up tester offers two distinct advantages over the locked wheel tester number 1 no force measurement is necessary the force can be computed by knowing the test wheel's moment of inertia and its rotational acceleration force measuring devices for the locked wheel tester cost a significant amount of money and second because the test tire is in contact with the pavement while locked for a much shorter time than the locked wheel tester it significantly significantly reduces the test tire wear the next method is sand patch method which is given in astm e96596 and this method determines the macro structure of the pavement layer you need a cylindrical container of 100 ml capacity a brush to clean the surface a flat disc of 64 mm diameter and dry sand which will be passing 300 micron and retained on 150 micron it's a coarse sand and a scale for measuring the diameter of the patch so first step is that you brush the test area and move the dust and loose material then you take 25 ml of the sand passing 300 mm and retained on 150 pour it in the form of a heap and then using the disc flat disc of 64 mm diameter you spread the sand in a circular path so that the surface wires are completely Now, if D is the diameter of the circle or diameter of the patch, then texture depth will be volume of sand divided by area of the patch. And volume of sand is 25 mL, or you can say 25,000 millimeter cube. Area of patch is pi by 4 d square. And if you put the value of pi here, that will be 31,830 divided by d square. That is the texture depth, where d is in millimeter. so friends thank you very much for watching this video we have discussed several methods of determining skid resistance of pavement which is important for safety reasons also you can write your comments in the comment box